Good morning. Good morning. All right, I feel like bases are loaded. I do not consult with the worship team to say, hey, you need to sing about this. I don't talk to Brandon and say, hey, can you intro this? But it's very clear that there's a theme of what's happening this morning, and we're going to stay right in that river. Okay, so uh, I need your help this morning. Can anybody help me? Okay, so I have one of my favorite verses, and it's 2 Timothy 1, chapter 7, or chapter 1, verse 7, but I need you to help me read it, and when we get to the words in red, I want to hear you extra, extra loud. Can you do this? Okay, let's read together. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love. Well done! That was impressive. Okay, so here's one reason I love this verse. Is This is like, if the spiritual realm had a playbook, this is it, right? You've got like the devil and his little devils over here, and they're like, all right, guys, we really got one weapon, but we're going to hit it hard. It's fear. If we can just get everybody to be afraid, then it's easier to control them. And when they're afraid, then the spirit of offense comes in a lot easier. The bitterness really sticks strong to that fear, uh, that fear of rejection. Really, we've got them at that point, okay? So we're going to really work hard to put in a spirit of fear into all those little people down there on earth. Contrast that with over here, we've got Holy Spirit who has no fear. And he's like, Jesus told him. It's better if I leave because I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's trademarks are power. There is nothing that will overtake you. You have all power within you. Love. You have a spirit of love in you. Surely that's going to contrast over there in that plan. The spirit of love will triumph over fear. And also the Holy Spirit, just as a bonus, gives you some self-control so that you don't have to be controlled by other things. So that's the Holy Spirit's playbook, okay? And we get to decide who are we going to listen to. This is a constant theme in our life. It, the Bible goes on to say in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, to really drive this home, there is no fear in love, but perfect love, the perfect love of our Father casts out, I don't know if you've ever been fishing, I don't fish, but I saw it on a TV show. When they (laughs) cast out, they're getting the hook as far away from them as they can. They're casting out something. So they're casting out fear is what we're talking about here. That's what love does. For fear has to do with what? Punishment. Punishment. No, thank you. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So the enemy's camp is all about fear, 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 fear. That's the agenda, and that is the driving force. And I think we've seen that in our society recently. So much so that the emotional health of the American family is at an all-time low. Because fear is just that magnet that all of the unhealthy things can mount on top of that. So I want to ask two pretty tough questions. I'm not asking for your answer out loud. This is between you and God. But I want to ask you a question this morning. Does your emotional health match your spiritual maturity? Because if it doesn't, then it's kind of like one of your legs is longer than the other. And how's that working for you? You're walking with a limp. Because we're in this building today, we thought this was a priority today because we're here, we want to be spiritually mature, and that's honorable. I'm here too for that reason. But if that's our only goal is that we get knowledge about the book of God, God's word, and we don't apply it, which is wisdom, which is where our emotional health comes from, then there's a gap. And the goal isn't that we get so knowledge filled. Okay. That would be really big head. Okay. We want to apply it. That's wisdom. The second question I'm going to ask you is, are you getting your emotional needs met by your successes in life or by your relationships at home? And if you just tasted what we could call is conviction, I hope the next gift you open is the gift of repentance. 
And repentance just means to change the way you think. So right now in your seat, you can just talk to Abba Father and say, I'm sorry that I feel more emotionally filled up when I'm performing. And I confess that I want to be the person that loves their family well. That's the kind of people we want to be. That's where emotional health can match spiritual maturity. We're just getting started, people. We're not even on first base yet. Okay, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 says, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Yes, and all of your soul and all of your mind. The very fact that the Bible has to say all of your heart indicates that the heart can be divided. It can also be broken. Did you know the number one killer in the United States is heart disease? Is this possibly related to the broken heartedness and pain of our people? Do you know there's something called broken heart syndrome? Syndrome means there's no known origin. A broken heart syndrome has all the physical effects of a heart attack, all the feelings of a heart attack, but medically there's no evidence of heart failure. So possibly the broken heartedness of our American people is just pain that we haven't learned how to deal with in our past. The Substance Abuse Services Administration says that 90% of all mental health disorders are rooted in unresolved trauma. 80% of addiction is rooted in unresolved trauma. Adults who have childhood abuse disproportionately use healthcare services. Girls who experience sexual harm are six times more likely to have cancer, four to five times more likely to use alcohol or drugs, two times as likely to have significant weight gain, and 33 to 50% of girls who had sexual abuse report a suicide attempt. Don't tell me there's no correlation between what happened to you in your past and how you're dealing with it now. If you don't care about your past, you must not care about your future. How much time and money could we be saving our families and our communities if we knew how to process our pain and our trauma? I want to talk to you quickly about two types of trauma that I learned in my research. Trauma A, everybody say A. A is for the absence of good things. Trauma A are things that you don't, didn't get growing up or maybe you haven't gotten in this last year. Affectionate touch, affirming words, acceptance, quality time, value, unconditional love, food, shelter, housing. These are the things that you deserve, you should have, this is normal to have, and for some reason or another, you didn't have it. Could have been for a period, could have been for a long time. That's trauma A. Trauma B is what we normally associate with trauma, and this is the bad things that happen. These are the big ones, divorce, death, natural disaster, betrayal. That's what Pastor Brandon was talking about this morning. There's a betrayal. There's an abandonment. There's an abuse. There's events that never should have occurred. That's trauma B. And what I've learned, trauma over here, It's part of the enemy's camp. Okay? He can have an event happen, but how we respond to it decides if it's going to be a trauma for us or not. Because the same sun that hardens the clay also melts the water. And so we get to decide how we're going to respond to an event. And if we internalize it and we adopt a spirit of trauma, it will torment us. And what I've learned is that trauma blocks love or connection or identity, but love heals trauma. That's why I've called this, this morning, a spirit of love. Because we're not just going to prophesy problems, trauma, all the things the enemy's doing. We're going to prophesy what Jesus is doing, and he sent us his spirit of love so that we may be overcomers. I want to open up today and share a part of my life that I rarely share publicly. I call it the dark night of my soul. For the rest of my life, that season will be a marking point. There will be Rebecca's life before this season, and there is Rebecca's life after this season. It was a season for my family that included the deepest betrayal we'd ever experienced. 
Now, I do want to be careful how I talk about it because I don't have permission from the other side, and so I want to talk honoring about them, and I will share this from my point of view, and I will take ownership. One small part of the story that I can share publicly is that I had what I believe to my, be my first but also final panic attack in the Tupperware aisle of Costco. I was standing there, if you've ever had a panic attack, I'm sorry. And it was if it was my last day in terms of I didn't know how to get a breath, the room turned dark, it was spinning around me, and I thought for sure I was dying. So I held onto my cart for dear life, and I just prayed that God would get me out of here. And quite possibly, what was happening in that moment, how my body was responding, was because of the events that had happened the day before. Law enforcement has showed up at our door and let us know that we were under investigation. All of the charges were completely false, but we immediately found ourselves in a swarm of lawyers, law enforcement, and a whole bunch of other agencies. We ended up needing to sell our car and our house just to pay for the situation that we found ourselves in. Needless to say, it was traumatic for me. What I also learned was that my pain might not be my fault, but healing certainly was my responsibility. So I was not going to placate to that fear as long as I could. Let's fast forward to last year. My husband and I were on a ministry trip with our good friend, Joanne Moody. A girl named Monica, who's watching right now, I had met the day before, and she asked me if she could pray for me. And I said, sure. She said, do you trust me? And I said, of course. Monica led me upstairs to the master bathroom bathtub where she asked me if she could wash my feet. As we sat on the edge of this empty bathtub, Monica said that she could tell I was carrying burdens that were not mine to carry. She wanted to wash my feet as a symbol that I was entering a new season. A minute later, the owner of the home joined us upstairs in the bathtub and said, I was just sitting downstairs in my kitchen. I asked Jesus, where are you? He said, I'm in your bathtub. So I came upstairs and here you girls are, let's do this. I was like, okay, yeah, this is normal. Monica asked me to close my eyes and to see Jesus. I struggled. I instantly felt panic. Fear was creeping in. I expressed my difficulty in seeing Jesus and she led me through some inner healing prayers. Jesus was so ever gently revealing to me a spirit of trauma that I had been carrying as my protector for many years. I've, she prayed for me, and as she prayed for me and rebuked the spirit of trauma, I'm here to tell you today, I felt something physically jump out of my chest, and I knew the spirit of trauma had left. I immediately knew I was different. I was receiving emotional healing. I was receiving clarity and I was receiving new thinking. It was if the fog had cleared. Amen. Does anybody have some fog to clear? God is a fog clearing God. Today, some of you are gonna see clearer than you've ever seen before. Okay, the spirit of trauma is not yours to carry because it's big brother is a spirit of fear. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. I know you're here today. I know you're listening. I know that these are your neighbors. These are your coworkers. These are your family members. These are you, people. These are me. We have been crushed in spirit. There has been a spirit of trauma over the world the last couple years because it's the enemy's agenda. If he can get us afraid, we're easier to control. That's not the kingdom's agenda. No. And so for me, the spirit of trauma wasn't just believing that bad things could happen. It was believing that when those bad things happened, that I would be powerless. That was the root of the lie that kept me stuck. So believing the lie that I was powerless was all the ammo the enemy needed to wreak havoc in my life. And it made fear my guide for too long. And in that bathtub, I let 
the spirit of love to come and take over. Amen. Release the spirit of trauma, giving that pain to Jesus, and he gave me his love and power instead. If you're interested, this is um, this Wednesday night, I'm gonna host a workshop, it's a free Zoom class, and I wanna talk to you and share more of my journey of what it looks like to emotionally heal from trauma. If you're interested, this Wednesday night, from your couch, I'd love you to join me. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Yep. Do you think that's important? If you watch what's in your heart, you don't have to watch what's coming out of your mouth. Because from your heart, your mouth speaks. The problem is when you're wounded, your heart is in lockdown. Your heart is in protector mode because that's all you know. Now it's your job. Oh, you, you wanna marry me? Oh yeah, okay, for, uh, well, let's just do this for a while. How's that working for you? When you're in lockdown and protector mode, you don't trust anybody. And then you wonder why you feel isolated. So we're going to do something we don't normally do in church right now. And we're going to do, we've, I've given you a little bit of information, but now we're going to do what's called an impartation. Don't get scared. It's a fancy word for just saying that we're going to invite Holy Spirit to come and meet with each one of us individually. So I want you to get comfortable wherever you're at. I'm going to lead us through a guided prayer, just going to be you and Holy Spirit. We have plenty of time, so don't worry. I'm going to lead you through a prayer that we're all going to do, which is you and Holy Spirit. And then at the end, we'll invite the prayer team up and we'll respond to some corporate words. So I want you to physically get in a comfortable position. Close your eyes. And just like you feel close to someone when you think about a special time with them or something nice that they did, that same thing can happen with you and God. So right now, just think about a, a special connection you've ever had with God. Maybe it was a moment where you connected with God. Maybe it was over coffee this morning. Whenever it was, and if you're willing, please ask Holy Spirit, Show me how you want me to perceive your presence right now. Holy Spirit, how do you want us to perceive your presence? How do you want me to know that you're with me right now? And while that's happening, I just pray, Holy Spirit, I rebuke and restrain any spiritual force that would seek to interfere with my encounter with you right now. Holy Spirit, we ask you to refresh our connection with you right now. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's not constrained by time. He will take every opportunity he can to connect with you. He loves to be with you. And once you feel him close to you, just tell them what it is that you're thankful for. What do you appreciate about him being with you right now? When we express what we're thankful for, we release a chemical called oxytocin. It's actually a bonding chemical that bonds parents to babies and it helps you feel more bonded to the object of your thanksgiving or what it is that you're appreciating. So just tell Jesus, tell Holy Spirit what it is that you appreciate about him.
Holy Spirit, we give you our ability to image. We yield it to you now. Allow me to see however it is that you would like me to perceive your presence. After you've established a good connection with Holy Spirit, just take a minute to explore the rest of your heart. See if there's anything not in line with receiving his love. Tell him that you want to love him with all of your heart. And if you're ready, if you're ready, he's ready to take the ball of trauma that you've been carrying around. So go ahead and just hand that to him. You can hand him all of it, all of the pain. All of the trauma, the times that you weren't sure that you were going to make it. And then ask him what he has for you in return. If you're shaking right now, that's just your body releasing trauma. That's okay, you're safe. Just ask Holy Spirit, is there anything you wanna tell me right now? Anything you want me to know? Any lies I've been believing? <laughs> Just ask him, what is the truth? We're just going to stay here for a minute. There's no rush. It's just you and Holy Spirit. If you need a hug, just ask him to hold you. Some of you might want to just dance with Jesus. For me, I just feel like he's handing me a cup of cold water. Just a cup of refreshment. He sees me. He's telling me that I've never been alone.
So I reject the lie that said I, has been alo- I have been alone. I just receive the spirit of love that your word promises. As you look to your future, go ahead and just give God all of your concerns. All of those loaded questions, those mountains of impossibility. Give it over to him right now. And what is his promise to you? What is he saying to you right now as he is face to face, cheek to cheek? With your creator. This is something you can do every day. So take one more look at your heart. Is there anything there that has been holding you back? It hasn't been giving you life. It's been a source of pain. Source of fear. He's still standing there. He can carry more, so just give it to him. If you would just put your hand on your heart and say, Jesus, I give you my whole heart. And when you're ready, we're just going to stand and receive from him. We're still going to stay in a posture of receiving from Holy Spirit. There's no rush. When you're ready, you can stand and just ask Jesus, what do you have for me today? What are you speaking over my heart today? Thank you, Jesus, that we get to leave lighter than we came in. Thank you, Jesus, that you're healing hearts, not just in the natural, but in the spiritual as well. Thank you, Lord, that you're downloading ways to heal from our trauma. 
We thank you for the tool of forgiveness that allows us to release the people that have caused harm to us into your hands, Father. Thank you, Father, that this connection does not end when we walk out of these doors. But this is our new normal, to be connected to you, Holy Spirit. So we receive a spirit of love. We receive a spirit of power. And we receive a spirit of self-control. And we declare that there is no weapon formed against us that will prosper. So right now, whatever your encounter was like with Holy Spirit, I just want you to thank him. Thank him. May we never take his presence for granted. The Bible says that in his presence is the fullness of joy. So if you don't feel joy, just ask him to fill you up. Fill you up with joy. Fill you up with hope the joyful expectation of good, fill you up with faith that you can do hard things. You are full of power. You are not powerless. You have downloads from heaven for that situation at work that you don't understand. You have kingdom ways of thinking. You have tools that will reconcile your relationships. So prayer team, go ahead and come on up. And I just want to speak a blessing over all my brothers and sisters. Will the Lord bless you and keep you and continue to make the glory of his countenance shine upon you. That he would be gracious to you and that you would be kept in his peace. I'm not going to promise that there aren't storms out there. I am going to promise that he, perfect peace, will be with you in that storm and that you have the authority to speak to the waves. So if the Lord's been speaking something to you this morning and he is stirring your heart and you are ready for some breakthrough, you're ready to process and to get some prayer warriors with you. This is what this team is up front. So come on forward, come receive prayer. There is no rush to go get your kids. Stay and linger. We're not done connecting with Holy Spirit. Ask him what he has for you. Ask him what your next steps are. If you have pain in your body, you don't have to leave here today with it. Come forward and get pain or get healing for any pain in your body, any healing for a relationship in your life, any trauma that you're still feeling the effects of, come forward, let one of us pray with you. You're not alone in this journey, we are together. We are banding with you as your brothers and your sisters to say that you are not alone. We are overcomers together. We are with you, you are not alone. In Joshua chapter one, four times, it says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. When someone says something four times, we should be listening. There is a message of hope. We're not going to bow to the enemy and fear anymore. You are strong and courageous. You are strong. You have courage. That's who you are. That's what love is. That's a spirit of love in you. It triumphs over fear.
If there's an area in your life right now that just feels like a mountain of impossibility, I want you to close your eyes right now and I want you to picture Jesus standing on top of that mountain. And Jesus is bigger. He is bigger. Nothing is bigger than Jesus. And so align your heart and your thinking to come into subjection with what kingdom thinking that says, Jesus, you are bigger. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have a spirit of power in me. What the enemy meant for evil, God, I declare you will turn it for good. And that turning happens now. You're turning it for good. And it starts with the posture of our heart.